Russian tanks are smaller and lighter than their Western counterparts. But there's more to this story than just weight. Their unique design philosophy reflects decades of military strategies that prioritize speed, mobility, and mass production. But what does this mean on the battlefield? And how does this compare to the West's approach to tank design? Let's dig in. Russian tanks didn't just end up lighter by accident. This goes back to the Cold War era when Russia, then the Soviet Union, emphasized the need for mass production and fast deployment. Their goal was to field a large number of tanks that could overwhelm enemy forces through sheer numbers and speed. To do this, they had to keep their tanks lightweight and simple to produce. Western tanks, on the other hand, evolved with a different mindset. Countries like the US and the UK focused more on technological superiority and battlefield survivability. Instead of producing vast numbers of tanks, they aimed for fewer but more powerful, heavily armored, and technologically advanced vehicles. These different approaches have shaped the modern tanks we see today. So, why exactly are Russian tanks smaller? A big reason is their focus on maneuverability. Lighter tanks like the T-72 or T-90 can move fast across the battlefield. They're easier to transport, especially over long distances, which is crucial for Russia's massive land area. The smaller size also helps with hiding tanks from enemy detection. Western tanks, like the American M1 Abrams or the British Challenger II, are much heavier. Why? Because they prioritize firepower and protection. These tanks are built to withstand direct hits, which means more armor and more weight. The U.S. Abrams weighs over 60 tons compared to Russian tanks that are typically under 48 tons. This is a major trade-off between speed and survivability. One of the key features of Russian tanks is the use of an autoloader. This is an automatic system that loads shells into the gun, replacing the need for a crew member. With fewer people inside, the tank can be smaller. Sounds smart, right? Well, not entirely. This autoloader exposes the tank's ammunition to the crew compartment. If the tank is hit, the ammo can explode and take out the entire crew in one blast. Western tanks don't use autoloaders. Instead, they have a crew member manually loading shells, which makes the tank bigger and adds weight. But Western tanks also separate the ammunition from the crew, which provides more safety. If the tank is hit, the ammo doesn't explode inside, making the crew much safer. Russian tanks are built for fast, aggressive attacks. Their smaller size and lower profile make them harder to spot and hit, especially in large open areas like the plains of Russia. They're designed to move quickly and overwhelm enemies with sheer numbers. Western tanks, on the other hand, are made for head-to-head -head combat. They can take more hits and keep fighting, making them perfect for defensive roles or urban warfare. However, they're slower, less agile, and harder to transport. In fact, some bridges can't even support their weight, which can limit their movement in certain areas. The trade-offs are clear. Russian tanks win in speed and numbers, but Western tanks have the edge in firepower and survivability. So, which approach is better? That depends on the battlefield. Let's not forget that geography plays a huge role in these designs. Russia's massive landmass is mostly flat and open, making speed and mobility critical for their tanks. They need to move quickly across vast distances, sometimes without the best roads or infrastructure. A lighter, smaller tank makes sense here. Western tanks, especially those from NATO countries, are designed with different battlefields in mind. Urban combat, mountainous regions, and more complex terrains mean they need tanks that can handle rough conditions and withstand heavy fire. The extra weight helps them do just that. Now, in today's conflicts, like in Ukraine, we've seen the real-world effects of these design choices. Russian tanks have been criticized for being outdated, despite their speed. Their lightweight design makes them vulnerable to modern anti-tank weapons. Reports suggest that Russia has lost thousands of tanks, showing that sheer numbers aren't always enough 
if the design itself has flaws. Western tanks, meanwhile, have been slower to deploy but have shown their dominance in certain situations. The heavy armor and advanced targeting systems make them formidable in the right conditions, but they also come with logistical challenges. These tanks guzzle fuel, and transporting them isn't easy, especially when bridges and infrastructure can't support their weight. In the end, Russian tanks are built for speed and numbers, while Western tanks prioritize firepower and protection. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, but modern conflicts show that lighter isn't always better. If you enjoyed this breakdown, be sure to comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for more content like this.